This is huge. What if you are able to interact with Assistance API using interface? What if you can create a user interface like this and able to ask questions based on the files you upload? What if you can create that application using an easy user interface builder called Streamlit? That's exactly what we are going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about Assistance API with Streamlit. It converts your existing Assistance API code into a beautiful user interface. Before going into that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence in my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and stay tuned. Coming to Assistance API with Streamlit. First up is to create an assistant. Next, creating a thread. Next, creating a message for the thread. And finally, running that assistant. I've already covered this in the previous video, which I will link in the description below. I'm going to extend this further by adding Streamlit application. To do that, in your terminal, pip install Streamlit and click enter. As usual, export your OpenAI API key like this and click enter. Now import Streamlit as ST. Now we are going to convert this whole code into a function called main df main i'm going to tap all the code till the end now the whole code is inside the main function which i have zoomed out for you now at the end you initiate that with the main like this now in this code there are some places where we print out the results such as print run status i'm going to change this to st.write two more places it's print so i'm going to try that st.write and print st.write this is a streamlit version of printing. Now we need a text box and a submit button for the user to type in the question and click the submit button. To create an input text box, user query equals st.textbox for adding a text box. And you are adding, enter your query, then you are providing a default text to enter. Now I'm going to pass this variable in the content field. Now when the user enters the query, it dynamically go into the content section. To create a submit button, we're going to create st.button submit. Then I'm going to tab all the remaining code till the end and then click the tab button. So if the user clicks the submit button, then the remaining code will run. So we did three things. First, we created the main function and then we replaced the print with st.write. And thirdly, we created the text input and the button. Now we're going to run the code. To run the code, type streamlit run assistance streamlit.py. My code is in assistance hyphen streamlit.py file and I click enter. This will automatically open the streamlit app. If not, you can even browse this URL and go to the streamlit app. Now I'm in the streamlit app. I'm going to click the submit button. Now the assistance API is running and you can see the results from assistance API directly printed out. You can see it in progress, waiting for the assistant to process. And we got the answer here. Dance Monkey is a song by Tones and I. 98 beats per minute. Now we are going to ask a question again. Tell me about underdog beats. Now we got the response. And at the bottom you can see the assistant forgot my previous question. That is because whenever we click the submit button, it automatically generating a new assistant and a new thread and running it. So how can you fix this? That's when we need sessions in Streamlit. We don't want to upload file each time we run the code. And also we don't want to create a new assistant and a new thread each time. In this client, file, assistant and thread are the four things which we need to keep it constant every single time the user clicks the submit button. By keeping these four variables constant and saving it in the sessions variable, we are preserving ChatGPT's memory. First, we are creating a condition if client not in st session state, and I'm going to tab the client file assistant and the thread. I'm going to select that and then click the tab. If we want to add client to the session state, add st.sessionState.client. That's the only difference. So now we're going to add st.session underscore state before all the four variables. First, I'm adding this before every client like this in the thread area, in the message session, in the run the assistant and also retrieve the run status. Similarly, I'm going to add before the file, create assistant file. Next, I'm going to add before assistant, paste it there, and then assistant ID, 
paste it there. Next, add it before the thread, like this, thread ID, thread ID, in every single place. That's it. You have moved the client to the session state, you have moved the file to the session state, you have moved assistant to the session state, and you have moved the thread to the session state. Those are the only changes. Now we are gonna run this code. Going back to your interface, at the top, you can click rerun. This will automatically run the updated code. Now I'm gonna click submit. I'm also going to note the assistant's ID so that we know every time the same assistant is being used and the memory is being retrieved. Seems like the document you provide appears to contain information on various songs, including those titled Underdog. So I had got information about Underdog from the songs.txt file I uploaded. Tell me about Dance Monkey. I'm clicking the submit button. Now I got the results. I'm gonna search if the assistant ID is the same. Yes, the assistant ID is the same as it was from the previous query, which means we will definitely get the old conversation, which you can see here. First, we asked about underdog beats, and it is here with the answer. And also next, we asked about Dance Monkey, and we got the answer here. The song Dance Monkey by Tones and I. That's it. Now we made chat GPT to remember our conversation. We can even clear this logs by removing st.write. I'm removing that here. I'm going to ask another question. Dance Monkey Decibel, and click the submit button. Now all our logs got removed and here is the answer. The decibel level is minus 6.4 dB. This is from the text file which I uploaded. This is just a basic streamlit tutorial to convert the assistance API to streamlit. Now you can extend this further to make it more advanced. That's it, as simple as that. I'm going to create more videos in regards to assistance API, so stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.